Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the Viva Mondo webinar series. Today we are joined by NYU Tandon School of Engineering. We have the lovely Corey with us and Liana, who will be giving a great presentation today. Uh, now, just a little bit about Viva Mondo and what we do to help you. Uh, Viva Mondo exists to help students find the next part of their international uh, education. We help out with visa advice, um, application details, you name it, we have it. Um, and that is what the webinar will hopefully give you some details of today in New York. Um, now, just a little bit about the webinar. Um, please do ask questions. We encourage questions throughout the whole webinar. Um, and please place them in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. And we will get to those at the end of the presentation. All right, I'm going to hand over to you, Corey, and take it away. Actually, I believe we are going oh, to begin Liana? with uh, Liana, and then I will uh, see everyone in just a moment. Yeah, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, <clears throat> just to introduce myself, my name is Leanna Kowalis. I'm the Associate Director of Graduate Admissions at the NYU Tandon School of Engineering. Um, I'm joined by uh, my colleague, Corey Cottingham, who's the Assistant Director. Uh, both of us are part of a team that usually will travel uh, to you to meet you at your um, university or in your city, but obviously in these extraordinary times, that's not something we're able to do. So we're very happy to be able to join you virtually and um, hope that this will still be an engaging um, and informative discussion for you. Um, in our presentation, we're going to cover several aspects of things you might want to know about picking a graduate school, as well as specifically about NYU Tandon School of Engineering. We're gonna talk about our history, um, the prestige of an education you can gain at NYU Tandon, the knowledge you'll gain, um, the important community that you will join, um, what it's like to live and study in New York City. Um, and then we'll cover also um, application requirements and more logistical questions. Um, so first we're gonna talk about our uh, rich history here at NYU Tandon. Um, the school was founded in 1854 as the Brooklyn Collegiate and Polytechnic Institute. Um, this is a timeline of a lot of our historic developments throughout history, and I'll cover a few of those. Um, but a couple of things I wanted to highlight is that in 2014, this is when uh, the Brooklyn uh, Collegiate and Polytechnic Institute merged with NYU. Um, and then in 2015, thanks to a generous donation, um, we became the Tandon School of Engineering. Uh, in 2020, you can see, I'll cover this as well, but we um, now have been climbing steadily in the rankings since 2014. Uh, the amount of resources <clears throat> um, and benefits that have come from joining with NYU have been tremendous. Um, and so we are very excited about our future and very proud of our history as well. So let's talk about some of these past achievements. Um, I'll go through these pretty quickly, but um, in 1895, one of our professors, Samuel Sheldon, took one of the very first successful X-ray photos, which obviously is a very important technology. <laughs> um, in 1957, a few Decades later, our alumnus Eugene Kleiner formed the Fairchild Semiconductor, or what is now known as Silicon Valley. About uh, five years later, um, one of our alumni uh, just developed the direct current uh, defibrillator, obviously a very important um, invention for many of our loved ones. And then in 1977, um, another alumnus, Richard Orford, uh, reinvented the modern ATM and his technology is still used in many of the world's ATMs today. Um, in 2003, uh, we started uh, what is called CISA, Cybersecurity Awareness Week, which is the largest run student cybersecurity event in the world. It started just with students from our campus. Basically, it's a week long conference slash uh, seminar with lots of different programming. But the highlight of the week is a hackathon uh, where students join together in teams and try to 
hack into the Department of Homeland Security or back then um, the uh, and the Pentagon and obviously this is sponsored by the government and so a lot of the students coming out of this are then hired by government contractors whether in the US or in their own countries. Now it has expanded across the world and so people join not just um, in person but virtually to um, participate in the events of this week, including the hackathon. In 2018, we really started ramping up um, another aspect of NYU Tandon, which is um, paramount to who we are, which is entrepreneurship. So right now we have three future labs, we call them. Basically, these are business incubators um, that uh, students can apply to from all over the world if you have um, certain business ideas, uh, or a team of people that you want to work with, but you still need some resources. Um, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on in the presentation in more detail, but these companies, uh, these uh, future labs have generated over 100 companies to date um, and, and it grows, you know, every year. Um, and then just this year, as you can imagine, our uh, team of faculty, students, uh, um, all the researchers on our campus really jumped in 100% for to develop rapid responses um, to uh, help with the international response to COVID-19. One of the earliest inventions that we had was a design for making a face shield in hospitals. Um, out of materials that currently existed. Um, we got requests for this design from universities and hospitals all over the world. Uh, so this is something that we are very um, proud of. And uh, since then, we also have, and we have faculty working on all other aspects in our medical school working on a vaccine as many, many others are around the world. Um, so this is something that is very exciting about being at a major research institution that you can not only participate in <clears throat> ongoing research projects and new research projects, that, but you can also be involved directly in combating current world problems when they happen. So I want to talk a little bit about the reputation of our university as well as our faculty and students. Um, just to share a few of our rankings with you, um, NYU is ranked number 28 for the best global universities, according to US News and World Report. Um, and in that same publication, NYU Tandon is uh, number 38 among the best US engineering schools. This number um, is especially significant to us. As I mentioned, we, we merged with NYU in 2014. And since then, we have become the fastest climbing engineering school in the rankings. And so every year since then, our ranking has increased um, and we expect it to continue to do so into the future. Um, Times Higher Education ranks us number 27, uh, best world university. And then another ranking, which we are especially proud of is at number four, Dream School. Um, this is very subjective, obviously, but Corey and I, as we travel around the world, talk to a lot of students who have had dreams of living and studying uh, not only in New York City, but specifically at NYU. So we hope that um, it lives up to the expectations that you all have. Some other highlights, like I mentioned, over 100 companies have um, come out of our future labs in the last few years. Um, we have three Nobel Prize winners, a huge uh, research budget, um, our average uh, student faculty ratio is 15 to 1 and our average class size is 35. Um, we also have had three astronauts graduate, uh, which is uh, pretty cool and we often have them come talk to our students as well. Um, to get an idea of the size of the school, um, just at NYU Tandon, this isn't all of NYU, but the, we have a little over 5,000 students and you can see that it's pretty equally split between undergraduate and graduate students. This is a little bit unique for a lot of programs. Um, uh, in a lot of universities, the majority of resources go to undergraduate students and undergraduate programming. But because we have such an even split here at NYU, um, our graduate students 
receive um, quite a bit of attention funding as well as um, staff support. Um, one thing I wanted to highlight is that, uh, Corey will talk about this later, but for this year, um, again, because of these extraordinary circumstances, the uh, GRE is actually optional, um, but we still wanted to share these scores with you so that you knew kind of the range in which our students have been admitted. So in general, um, the average verbal score on the GRE is 153 and the average quantitative score is 166. Um, the minimum GPA requirement is a 3.0 on a 4.0 scale. Um, <clears throat> some other things to note is that NYU uh, Tandon has students from uh, 60 countries um, and that also that we have been voted number nine for America's most diverse colleges. So I wanted now to highlight a few more um, ongoing research projects. I know we talked about um, historic research that's happened, but we have a lot of exciting things going on. Um, we have 33 degree granting programs, most of which have a very robust research components um, divided into 11 academic departments, um, over 160 full-time faculty members and a network of over 500,000 alumni this is something we'll talk about again later on, the importance of the network that you build when you do come to graduate school. <clears throat> uh, so on this slide, we've highlighted a few of the very interesting projects going on right now at NYU Tandon. <clears throat> and I'll talk more in depth about some of these a little bit later. But we have um, people engineering proteins to mimic or improve upon nature, designing fabrics that can heat or cool wear using their own admitted energy. That would be amazing for me since I'm always so cold. Um, developing 5G and 6G networks, uh, detecting cancer making proteins in blood. Um, I wanna talk a little bit more about the first one that's listed here, which is programming robotic fish. Um, this is a project that was started several years ago by one of our the professors in our mechanical engineering department, Maurizio Porfiri. Um, he uh, designed these fish initially, and they have had many, many interesting um, discoveries coming out. <clears throat> First of all, they had the fish um, be able to mimic behavior of other fish so completely that these robotic fish could be put into um, natural environment to lead schools of fish away from danger, including oil spills and other things like that. Um, so it had a very uh, interesting and important environmental impact. Um, <clears throat> there have been many other things. The most recent, which I think is extremely interesting, is something that they call behavioral teleporting. Um, basically what they do is they have um, two tanks, and in each tank there's one live fish and one um, robotic fish. Um, and in one tank, the robotic fish is programmed to mimic the behavior of the live fish exactly, and then project those um, behaviors over to uh, the other tank. Um, and so the other live fish feels like he's interacting with um, another live fish instead of a robot. Um, they're actually currently um, researching what implications this could have for human behavior. Um, including um, an interesting idea about space exploration and having astronauts be able to interact with, um, basically interact with a robot who's mimicking the behavior of a loved one or a colleague um, here on Earth, which I think is in extremely interesting. Um, next, I wanna talk I, a little bit about um, Professor Nasser Memon. He is um, the cybersecurity, one of the cybersecurity experts here at NYU Tandon, and also the founder of that Cybersecurity Awareness Week, which I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> Professor Alicia Castillo is one of the rising stars in our Department of Biomedical Engineering. She has an amazing lab, um, the Laboratory for Biomechanics, uh, Mechanobiology, and Regenerative Medicine. Um, and they, the work they are doing in uh, that lab is extremely important and interesting in all aspects of um, uh, biomedical and uh, mechanical engineering. 
and then last but not least, I want to highlight Professor Jen Moncler. Um, she has been at the forefront of developing a um, at-home rapid COVID test, um, which is currently um, going through the process of getting a government FDA approval. This is something that I think is extremely important and will be able to allow you know, millions of people to feel comfortable um, rejoining re normal activities. Um, um, I'm going to turn the time over to Corey uh, for a moment um, and I will get back to you soon. All right, hello everyone and thank you. I'm sorry, I was having a bit of trouble finding my mouse. Um, again, I am Corey Cottingham. I'm an assistant director in the Office of Graduate Admissions. Um, I want to talk a little bit about all of the spaces that we have on our campus in Brooklyn for you as a graduate student to take advantage of. Uh, first, we have our Maker Garage, which includes a computer lab, conference space, and uh, video recording, among many other things. But for students who want to get involved in large scale projects, uh, this is a space that you would have access to all of those resources and administra administrative support um, to do some fabrication and to get, again, uh, a project off of the ground. We also have our magnet lab, which is a, an interdisciplinary laboratory, which is done in co collaboration with the Quran Institute of Mathematical Sciences, one of the top mathematical uh, sciences uh, think tanks in the not only the United States, but the world uh, through NYU CUSP, which is the Center for Urban Science and Progress. Of course, the Tandon School of Engineering, uh, Artish School of the Arts, which is one of the top in the United States and the Steinhardt School of Education. So there, uh, they're doing some interesting research into game design and engineering uh, and the ways that we as humans interact with uh, electronic interfaces among many other things. So if you're interested in the way that uh, art and technology interact with uh, humans, uh, that Magnet Lab may be of interest to you as a future student. We have our greenhouse as well, uh, which is more of a uh, collaborative space run by students to help students um, kind of launch ideas. And also uh, they provide workshops on the various technologies that we have for students to use and how you could get involved there. We've talked a bit about the future labs earlier when uh, Liana mentioned those, but our future labs functionally are incubators and we do have four on campus. We have our data future lab, the digital future lab, the urban future lab, which is heavily focused on uh, creating the kind of smart cities of tomorrow. And then we have our veterans future lab. Uh, but in these four laboratories, we will provide seed funding, uh, administrative support, office space, as well as mentorship from professors and local industry leaders to take a student uh, startup idea functionally uh, and get that off of the ground. To date, we've had over 100 different companies launched out of these future labs. One thing to note as well is that for international students, some of you may know that uh, while you are studying, you need to be employed on the campus of the university. These future labs, while they have the feel of a startup are uh, still considered on campus employment. So a great many of our international students may work at a future lab uh, and get an internship type experience that feels like uh, you know, you're working off of the campus, but uh, for the purposes of your student visa is considered on campus employment. So if you have an entrepreneurial bent, I do encourage you to look at the various future labs that we have and see which of those might be something that you'd like to get involved in as a future NYU Tandon student. We do pride ourselves at NYU Tandon and NYU as a whole uh, for being a global community. And this uh, is reflected in uh, the diversity of our administration, of our faculty, of our, uh, administ uh, of our students, of course, and of the city of uh, New York. So you'll be joining one of the most diverse cities and universities in the world. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. But beyond the diversity of our community, we also are one of the largest, if not the largest private nonprofit university in the United States. And so as an NYU student, NYU Tandon student, you have access to the other 
19, 20 colleges of NYU. So for example, if you are studying management of technology and you'd like to take a course from our Stern School of Business, uh, all of our programs have elective coursework built into the curricula so that you would be able to dip into one of the other NYU colleges and take courses that interest you to round out your profile uh, to set you up to uh, kind of move into whatever niche of your field of study that you are interested in. Of course, as a large university, we have uh, award-winning and comprehensive academic support services. So if you have any type of uh, special need or uh, need support, they would be able to do that for you. And as a large university, we bring some of the world's top thinkers to campus to give talks, to interact with our students, and they have great uh, social uh, music uh, events as well that they do among many other things. So you're not just an NYU Tandon student, but a student of New York University and get to take advantage of all that that means. Some of you may be aware that we are, of course, uh, have our main campus here in New York City, but also have two uh, other portal campuses, one in Abu Dhabi and another in Shanghai. And then we have 12 global academic centers located around the world. Now, while these are used primarily for study away for our students, uh, if you happen to find yourself in one of these cities, you would have access to those spaces to do research or work. Um, but more than just uh, you perhaps physically accessing these spaces, what it means is that the New York University uh, brand and network is known worldwide, uh, which should help you, uh, regardless of where you are looking for uh, employment after graduation, to perhaps get your hand or foot rather in the door uh, to continue on into your uh, career after graduation. I mentioned that we pride ourselves uh, from having students from all around the world. We have students from all 50 states. Uh, USA Today recently ranked New York University out of the thousands of universities in the United States as number two for having the most diverse student body. We currently have 33 countries represented among our graduate students just at NYU Tandon. We have 60 different countries represented if you include our undergrads and New York University has well over 100 different countries represented. So wherever you come from, you'll be able to learn from uh, people of different backgrounds and also to be able to connect with people uh, from a similar place so that you don't perhaps feel quite so homesick uh, on those days when you'd like to speak your own language or uh, eat your own food or whatever else you may be missing. Uh, we are in New York City, which is, as you are probably aware, one of the most dynamic cities in the world. Uh, let's do a little quick geography lesson. So here you'll see the northeastern area of the United States. We're located in New York City, which is at the southern tip of uh, the state of New York. We're located on the Atlantic seaboard down at the southern tip again of New York State. Zooming in closer to the New York City metro area, we have the five boroughs of New York City. These are the main divisions of the city. Down south, we have Staten Island. Then we have Brooklyn to the east, which is where uh, NYU Tandon is located. And you'll see that purple star indicating where our downtown Brooklyn Metro Tech campus is located. Uh, to our north and east, we have Queens, which is uh, one of the largest boroughs or the largest borough geographically speaking, and also the most diverse uh, neighborhood, so to speak, in the world. Up north, we have the Bronx, and then of course, there is Manhattan, which you're sure to know from movies and television. The purple star at the southern tip of Manhattan is where our Washington Square campus is located, and that is where uh, the, not all, but the majority of NYU schools are located. To our west, we have New Jersey, which is also a place that some of our students and staff may choose to live because of its proximity to the city and the good transportation options that are available to get to and from New Jersey. As you all are may have seen in the news, uh, New York did have uh, quite a, an issue with COVID early on this year in uh, April and May, but we have been doing very well in containing the virus in recent months. And New York has been through uh, crises before and we will uh, get through this one as well. Um, New York University has been in collaboration as Liana mentioned 
with New York City uh, throughout the crisis. Uh, we have shifted many of our resources to help support our frontline workers to help protect uh, some of the most vulnerable in the city and to do everything we can to follow all of the protocols that New York uh, State has put into place to protect not only our community members, but anyone who comes into contact with the New York University community. So. It's something that we are taking very seriously and thus far have seen good results uh, by following those protocols that we have put in place. But um, do keep in mind that our your safety and security as a student is of tantamount importance to NYU and New York City. New York City is known for the vibrancy of uh, opportunities that we have. Of course, if you're interested in shopping, we have everything from major retailers to uh, boutiques to really any type of uh, commodity you're looking for. If you can't find it in New York City, I don't think you'll be able to find it anywhere. Uh, we have world winning museums and art galleries, many of which offer discounted admission for NYU students. Uh, there are enough here that you could go probably to a different one every weekend of the year and still have plenty of time to spare. Uh, if you're a live music fan, of course, COVID has changed that uh, a bit, but we have been having outdoor uh, music events in the city and with reduced capacity as well. But we have, of course, the famous Carnegie Hall, Radio City Music Hall, and uh, hundreds if not thousands of smaller venues throughout New York City where you can see up and coming bands. And also I should mention bands of many, or musical acts of many different genres. Um, all types of different major world music will be available here in New York City. We are one of the, well, the largest and most densely populated city in the United States. And along with that, we have an award-winning system of parks and gardens in New York City. Of course, there is the famous Central Park in Manhattan, which I'm sure you have seen in television and movies. Closer to our campus in Brooklyn, we have the Brooklyn Bridge Promenade, which uh, I sometimes take lunch there on a nice day, which has, it's about a 15 minute walk from our campus and has a beautiful view of New York Harbor, as well as Lower Manhattan. We have the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. And uh, another thing that I think our students are very interested in is Prospect Park, and that's about a short subway ride or maybe 20 minute walk from our campus. And this has uh, meadows, sports fields, uh, lots of live events, and otherwise is a place that our uh, community and New Yorkers in general use to uh, take a break from the hustle and bustle of the city. One thing I like to bring up as well is if you're not familiar with New York City, we are uh, a coastal city. So when the weather is nice, we do have beaches available both in New York City and just outside that you can access within 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, if mountains are more your style, uh, you can go what we would call upstate via train uh, and be hiking in the mountains within one to two hours of leaving New York City. So we are dense, we are uh, an urban environment, but there's plenty of opportunities for you to reconnect with nature here in New York City. For sports fans, uh, you may have heard of the New York Yankees, as well as uh, our other top major uh, league sports teams in the New York area. Uh, closer to our campus in Brooklyn, we do have the Brooklyn Nets, uh, which is our basketball team. And I should also mention that beyond the more commonly played sports in the United States, we do have uh, cricket and a lot of less commonly played, uh, less common sports rather in the United States available for you to watch both as a spectator or to get involved in at the amateur level. So uh, everything from shopping to sports, New York City has plenty to offer you. But perhaps the thing that attracts most students to do a master's or PhD program at NYU Tandon is, of course, the strength of the New York City economy and its diversity. Uh, you may not be surprised to learn that Business Insider ranked New York as the most influential city in the world. Economically speaking, we do have, of course, uh, the major tech companies here, Facebook, Google, uh, and Amazon are all continuing to expand their footprint in New York City. We've seen a 22% job growth in New York City over the past two years. And I would like to highlight that we are not just finance and media, which is what most people do associate with New York City. While there are plenty of jobs in those areas, uh, construction is also a major sector. Uh, we'll talk a bit about tech 
and internet startups in a moment, but um, you'll see on the slide on the right side there some of the major uh, industries that do offer internship and job opportunities for our students following graduation. Closer to Brooklyn, and you'll see at the bottom of the slide, the downtown Brooklyn star uh, indicates where our uh, Metro Tech campus is located, but we have what we call the Brooklyn Tech Triangle, which goes from downtown Brooklyn to Dumbo and the Brooklyn Navy Yard. So in this triangle, we have nearly 10,000 people working in the tech sector, just under 1,400 different companies that have had a nearly $5 billion impact on the Brooklyn economy. So if you, again, are interested in doing an internship or perhaps working at one of these up and coming uh, tech companies after graduation, uh, you do have access to that within a 15 minute walk from our downtown Brooklyn campus. And we do not have just startups located in our area. There are also some large, well-established companies and you'll see some of those listed on the right side of the slide, including uh, JP Morgan, which is located adjacent to our campus uh, among many others. So uh, large to small, our Brooklyn location does offer a great number of internship and employment opportunities for Tandon students. Uh, New Yorkers do depend on our subway system to get around the city, both uh, from home and to work and class, as well as for socialization. Uh, we are very lucky in that the Brooklyn uh, Metro Tech campus does have very good subway access. So you'll see uh, on this slide, uh, 10 of the lines, subway lines rather, that come within around a five minute walk of our campus. Um, and you'll see that we do have good subway connection to our Washington Square campus. So if you want to go to the library, participate in activities, or perhaps take classes in our Manhattan Washington Square campus, uh, you would be able to go uh, either via subway or through the free NYU shuttle bus. And they take around the same amount of time, 15 minutes in the subway and about that on the shuttle, if uh, depending on traffic. So whichever you like, you'll be able to get easily to and from uh, our campus and wherever else you need to go in the city. We do get questions often about where will I be living in the city if I come and study at Tandon. Most of our students will find themselves living in either Brooklyn or Queens. As I mentioned earlier, some students may choose to live in uh, northern New Jersey as well. And if you would like, you uh, very easily could live in Manhattan and uh, get to and from our campus via subway without many issues. But uh, when you are looking at moving to New York City, do look at the subway lines and think about what your daily commute would look at look like rather based on the lines uh, near your home and near the places that you need to go in the city. Sometimes people coming from especially smaller cities in the US, uh, our international students don't seem to have uh, as many concerns, but uh, that New York is a big, bad, scary city, but that is not the case. Uh, we are uh, seeing some of the lowest crime rates in the history of the city in recent years. And uh, within that, even our Metro Tech Center in downtown Brooklyn is well secured. All of our NYU buildings do have ID access uh, through a key card uh, for you to uh, go into any of those buildings. Uh, we happen to be also located in downtown Brooklyn next door to the headquarters of the FDNY or the Fire Department of New York and the Police Department of New York. And for uh, the current COVID situation, NYU has implemented a rigorous and comprehensive uh, set of protocols to enter into any of our campus buildings. So before you come to class, on any given day, you will need to complete a screener on your phone as well as take your temperature and show that you have had a negative COVID test within, um, I'm not certain of the, the, the time period, but recently uh, to come onto campus. And of course, face coverings are required at all campus uh, sites. And we have also modified traffic flows to make sure that uh, our students and uh, staff are as safe as possible on campus. I do want to talk a little bit about the resources that NYU offers. If you are uh, coming to complete a master's or PhD program, you're probably thinking about your uh, career opportunities after graduation. And we at Tandon have two different offices that work to promote success among our students after graduation. The first of which is the Tandon Office of Career Services. I think one of the most interesting things that they do is offer personalized job coaching. So you'll be able to communicate with one of our um, 
job coaches, they'll take a look at your profile, discuss your career goals, and they will help to kind of create a map or a plan of uh, attack for you to attain the uh, career opportunities that you are interested in. They also will provide access to Tandon Connect, which is an exclusive job portal just for Tandon students and alumni. So many times we get messages saying, um, from employers rather, uh, looking for Tandon students to fill openings that they have. And so uh, in Tandon Connect, you'll see a full listing of those opportunities and have access to that again, both as a student and an alumni. Uh, another interesting thing that the Tandon Office of Career Services does is provide assistance in negotiating job offers and benefits packages. So when I first graduated from university, I didn't know much about how to negotiate a job offer. What does uh, vacation, uh, medical, and uh, all of the other benefits that come along, how do those play into the negotiation? So they will be able to help you through that if you're uh, either new to the United States or if it's your first time negotiating a job offer to help you make sure that you get the maximum benefit for uh, your first job or internship out of university. The Wasserman Center is another office that we have on campus. They will provide access to the Handshake uh, online jobs database. Uh, they have career fairs several times a year bringing both uh, major and uh, smaller companies to campus to meet with our students. Uh, in this year, many of those have been converted into virtual fairs, but hopefully we'll be able to resume in-person fairs in the near future. Uh, they'll help you to take a nice headshot for your uh, LinkedIn profile and any other professional uh, needs you may have. And they will also help you to set up your NYU eVita, which is a personalized portfolio functionally a web page, which will, you will be able to send to potential employers. Of course, as an NYU alumni, you will be joining a prestigious group of individuals, many of whom are very well placed at some of the world's best known companies. We have around half a million alumni, if you can believe it, uh, throughout the world. And so you going into the uh, workforce will have an NYU uh, degree, of course, on your resume or CV, and hopefully that uh, may help to get your foot in the door at a company. And we also do have alumni events in which uh, both in major cities internationally and around the United States, you may be able to meet up with uh, other NYU alumni to uh, network and to learn about potential job opportunities uh, in the local area. So the alumni network is something that does help to uh, continue our student success uh, after graduation. We do pride ourselves on the innovation that has happened at NYU in the past and is continuing through our future labs and other uh, venues into the future. Uh, but these are some of the most well-known companies that were founded by NYU community members. And uh, you'll see that I'm sure you've seen a great many of these. And perhaps if you join us, we'll be able to add the logo of your company there in the future. We do know that it is a, a serious thing to decide on where you're going to do a master's or PhD program. And it is a significant investment of time and potentially funds for you to do so. We at NYU Tandon though are certain that your choice to complete a master's or PhD at Tandon will be a strong investment. One of the ways that we know that is that the Wasserman Center did a survey of our most recent graduating class that showed that 97% of our graduates were working within their field of study within three months of graduation. Uh, we do see among the class of uh, 2020, they just did a survey that shows a six figure common starting salary for our graduates. QS has ranked us number 11 for graduate employability and uh, perhaps most interesting pay scale ranked NYU Tandon graduates or the school as a whole uh, at number four among um, the hundreds of US engineering schools for salary potential. So our graduates do go on to um, get good jobs, well-paying jobs and have great career success after graduation. I'm going to speed up a bit so we have plenty of time to answer your questions. Hopefully you are interested in joining us at NYU Tandon after having learned about our long history of invention and innovation, uh, the reputation that we have for being among the boldest uh, universities and schools in the world, uh, the fact that we have world leading cutting edge research happening through uh, some of the most intelligent professors you will find anywhere, uh, that our global community will provide learning experiences for you 
uh, to work both in, within the United States and anywhere around the world. And of course, the fact that where we are located in New York City provides uh, both quality of life and professional opportunities that are unmatched by uh, many other localities in the world. And also that being a large university, we have a vast amount of resources to help in allow you to uh, reach success during your program and after. So hopefully you are interested in applying to Tandon and let's discuss how to do so. We do for many of our programs have both spring and fall intakes. Uh, if you are interested in applying for one of our MS programs that does have fall intake, uh, and that would be all of our master's programs with the exception of financial engineering and mechatronics and robotics, you would need to have everything submitted to us by November 1st or very soon after. Do note that our PhD programs do not accept students for spring, which is January start, uh, but again, most of our master's programs do. If you're interested in one of our programs starting in fall or September of 2021, uh, our PhD programs have a deadline of December 1st, as do some of our master's programs. So for computer science, financial engineering, uh, digital media, integrated digital media, and management of technology. Uh, there is a priority deadline, which means that if you submit all of your materials to us by that December 1st deadline, you will both receive uh, a response as to whether you have been admitted sooner and also uh, perhaps have a better chance of being admitted by applying priority. For the other MS programs and uh, for those of you who would wish to have regular consideration, the deadline will be February 15th of 2021. Uh, for those of you interested in part-time programs, that's a May 1st deadline and cyber security or the rather the cyber uh, fellows program has a July 15th deadline. And if you have more specific questions about those deadlines, you can always ask us in the Q&A or um, certainly message us after the webinar. You will complete your application online and everyone who has attended this uh, information session will receive a waiver for the application fee of $90. So do uh, watch your email afterward to make sure that you uh, get that application fee waiver if it is of interest to you, which I would assume it is. Uh, do note that our online application por uh, portal does have a checklist where you can see which items you still need to submit which have been received and also monitor the progress of your application through uh, the admissions process. Uh, do note that when you send materials to our offices uh, that has to be manually updated in many cases so allow a week to two weeks after a document has been delivered to us for that to be updated. If you think there's an issue after uh, that period of time certainly reach out and we'll be happy to look into uh, any potential things, but the application checklist is the best place for you to uh, keep track of that. We do in a normal year only accept official transcripts and this would mean a transcript that is issued to you as the student in paper form uh, in a sealed envelope that you would then mail to us or that has been sent to us in digital format by your university registrar or the equivalent uh, office at your university. Due to COVID-19, we do understand that some universities are not operating normally or may be closed. If your university is closed and we can verify that, um, we will accept unofficial, meaning uh, either electronic transcripts issued to you or uh, transcripts that have been previously opened. So uh, try to get official transcripts if at all possible. If that will not be possible due to COVID-19 disruptions at your university, message our office and we will work with you to let you know if unofficial transcripts will be allowed uh, in your particular circumstance. Liana mentioned earlier the GRE averages that we have for our programs and again in uh, Previous years, GRE was required for all PhD and the majority of our master's programs. GMAT would have been accepted for management of technology. This year, the GRE and GMAT are not required uh, with the exception of our MS financial engineering program. So if you have taken the GRE, certainly uh, we encourage you to submit those scores if you would like, but if you have not taken it, uh, that will not be uh, an impediment to you being uh, considered for a program this year. 
If you're a non-native speaker of English who has not completed a program in an English speaking country previously, uh, you would need to sit for one of the tests of English proficiency. Our minimum for the TOEFL is a 90-90. The IELTS is a 7.0 overall. And we've recently added the Duolingo option. Uh, that is a test of English that can be done fully from home uh, via internet and we would look for a minimum score of a 115 on the Duolingo test. So again, if you're a non-native speaker of English, you would uh, need to sit for one of those tests. And if you do have questions, uh, if you've lived or worked for a significant amount of time in an English speaking environment, uh, you can apply for an English proficiency waiver. We will review that after it is received and let you know whether it has been approved or whether we'll still want you to sit for one of those uh, English proficiency exams. We do require all of those test scores to be sent officially. So it can't be a test score that was sent to you that then you upload. It will need to be sent uh, by the official testing agency to be considered official and added to your application. You will need to prepare a resume or CV uh, detailing your academic history and any relevant professional experience and also to upload a statement of purpose with your online application. There are a lot of questions about statements of purpose. Uh, in general, you will need uh, no more than two pages, so do keep it concise. Uh, a concise maximum of two pages about why you're interested in the program, uh, why you think you would be a good fit for the program, perhaps which research or professor uh, made you, uh, rather compelled you to apply for the program, and when talking about the statement of purpose, I always advise students, do not just reiterate things that we already know from other parts of your application. So don't just take your resume or CV and write that out in prose form, but rather use the statement of purpose to tell us something more about yourself, more about your interest in the program. Uh, and that will be uh, more helpful for our faculty when they are evaluating you than just, again, repeating things that we know from other parts of your application. So use that as a place to show uh, why you would be a good fit for the program. You will be asked to submit at least two letters of recommendation, three for uh, some of our PhD programs. These can be submitted uh, traditionally in an online uh, letter or rather in a paper letter mailed to our uh, office. Uh, they can be submitted in a PDF sent to our office by the recommender or uh, the most common way now is for you to write the name, relationship and contact information for your recommender into our application system. We will send them a link where they can submit their recommendation fully online. And again, that is the most common way, uh, especially now that uh, there have been some disruptions due to the COVID-19 situation. If you're applying to a PhD program and for some master's programs, you may want to submit supplementary documentation, including uh, any projects, research, uh, conference presentations that you're particularly proud of, and you can upload those along with your online application. Some universities do require interviews for all MS applicants. Uh, at Tandon, that is generally not the case. So we do, in most cases, interview PhD applicants. But if you're applying to an MH MS program, uh, you don't need to expect to sit for an interview. Uh, it may happen depending on the department. But in most cases, that, again, is reserved for PhD applicants. As with everything, do make sure that you are checking our website for the most up-to-date list of requirements um, because of these things do change sometimes and they are program specific. So make sure that you are uh, checking the website to make sure you're getting the most up-to-date information as that is the first place we will uh, let you know of any potential changes. And as always, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Liana or myself or our office at the uh, phone number and email listed there on the page. With that, we have a few minutes to answer some questions from the audience. And I'm going to now end my screen share and we will begin that. Yeah, I'll start. I see a question here that says, am I allowed to work during my degree? Does Tandon help with finding internships, et cetera? So um, as an international student, if you're coming on a student visa to the US to study, 
you are allowed to work up to 20 hours per week on campus. Um, as Corey mentioned, we have a wide variety of on-campus jobs available to our students. <laughs> can range anywhere from working in a research lab to um, working at the library, um, giving tours to prospective students, or we also um, hire, you know, about 40 graduate students in our office to help process applications. So there's a wide variety of things you can do. These jobs usually start at $18 per hour um, and are really a great opportunity for our international students to um, be able to get some work experience and also um, earn some money uh, while they're going to school. Um, and then I'll also, I know that Corey mentioned about the career centers, but um, just to reiterate the Tandon does have a wide variety of career services available um, and does provide help with finding internships in terms of bringing companies to campus, helping prepare you for interviews, um, really exposing you to all the opportunities. However, none of these opportunities are forced on you or given to you as a guarantee. It is your opportunity and responsibility to connect with these offices, to peruse the job databases, to meet with the companies. Um, so you will still be finding the internship on your own, but we provide a, a lot of resources that you would not have if you weren't part of the Tandon community. And just a reminder to chat any questions you have into the Q&A box um, right now. Um, and I'm also going to put our um, office contact information in the chat, since that is something that um, we want to make sure that you take advantage of. Yeah, I see another question here. How many international students are in NYU Tandon this year? Um, I don't have the specifics of Tandon international students, but I can tell you that New York University has more international students than any other university in the United States with around 19,000. Uh, so you will be joining a large university that has uh, the largest international student population in the United States. Uh, of our graduate programs, it's over half that are coming from uh, countries other than the United States uh, at the graduate level. So plenty of international students from, uh, again, a huge number of countries at both Tandon and NYU as a whole. And I also wanted to add on to that. <clears throat> I'm not sure if this was exactly what what you were getting at, uh, uh, meaning the person asking the question. Um, but we have gotten a lot of questions this year as well about um, how many people actually came um, from international locations due to COVID-19. How many international students do we have on our campus? We have a lot of concern that so many people deferred to 2021 that there won't be space mm -hmm. for any new students. Um, and we just had our final um, census numbers um, at the end of September um, for people to join. And we are very happy to say that we have actually brought in our second biggest class ever, even in the midst of COVID-19. Obviously, some of those students have started um, virtually. Some of them are on campus taking courses and some are doing a blended uh, schedule. Um, but we had a very small percentage of students actually defer to fall 2021. I believe it was less than 20%. Um, and so the capacity that we have um, for um, bringing in new students is the same basically as it is every year. Um, we had room to grow. And so if we do end up, if these students who deferred to fall 2021 do end up attending, uh, it still will not overwhelm what we have capacity to bring in. So that should not be a concern for any of you who are planning to apply to fall 2021. Um, and in terms of the percentage of those students that are international, um, again, I don't have the exact numbers, but in a normal year, we have 85% of our students um, in the graduate programs who are international students. And we brought in about the same percentage as we do in the past. So. Um, you know, as everybody, we were um, nervous and uh, very interested to see what would happen this fall. And we were happy to say that it seems to not have affected students' decisions uh, as much as um, we or they expected that it would. Okay, 
um, there are a few questions as well in the pre-registration, so I might ask you uh, one or two, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, there was a question regarding student mental health services. Is, does the university offer any uh, kind of health services on campus? Yeah, absolutely. Through I'm I'm not certain of the the technical or the exact name of the um, sensor, but yes, as part of your student services, you would have access to student mental health services, um, and as well as general health services through the NYU uh, student health center as well. Great. And there's one more about um, scholarships. If I am interested at uh, NYU. Canon School of Engineering, uh, how would I go about applying for a scholarship from abroad? So scholarships are something that we, um, that all students are automatically considered for once they're admitted to the program. So um, if you are admitted, uh, your application then immediately goes to the scholarship review committee. These scholarships we offer are merit-based scholarships. Um, they are not full scholarships, but they range anywhere from $5,000 per year to about $12,000 per year. And most students are somewhere in between those two numbers. Um, so this is something that we feel very strongly about is making sure that we offer these types of scholarships to um, all students, domestic and international, um, based on merit. And Liana, I think we should note that those um, merit-based scholarships are for the MS level. If you're admitted to uh, a PhD program, the funding opportunities are, are a bit wider uh, and the uh, department to which you're admitted will provide you with information on your funding package if you're admitted into one of those PhD programs, which generally does include a full waiver of uh, tuition and fees at the PhD level again. Awesome. Okay, well, I think we've come to the end of the Q&A section for now. Um, thank you so much for an informative presentation. Uh, I know that I've learned a lot more about New York, so I hope that you guys have as well. Um, feel free to ask them any questions after and get in touch with them by the information that Nina has uh, presented at the bottom of the screen. Um, any last words from you guys? Um, I just wanted to say again that we are so happy to be able to connect with you virtually, although we can't do it in person. Um, we are, um, NYU has done a phenomenal job at managing um, the COVID-19 crisis. Um, our, our infection rate at NYU is lower than the surrounding area in New York City, which is also very low. And um, we have done a great job of keeping courses in person and uh, updating our technology and helping people have a really um, as positive a, an experience as possible during this time. Um, we expect that this will only improve in the next um, semester and uh, we are very happy to talk to any of you at any time about questions or concerns with the application process um, and we really hope to see you on campus next fall or sometime in the future. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. And thank you guys for attending, um, as well as obviously the uh, lovely hosts that we've had today. Um, please do visit viva-mondo.com and sign up to our newsletter, um, and you will find out all, if not um, even more, about international travel and international education. Um, thank you guys for joining. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.